Hello again. So here are some lessons for interactive whiteboards that use annotation. These are the easiest to make and can easily be applied to lessons you already have in other programs. First we're going to start with one that's actually designed in the interactive whiteboard software. So the question here is, um, it's about teaching students to answer story problems. And the way we do that is we have a story problem here that we could read aloud, circle all the relevant numbers, and then put them in the equation below. So three, student, three friends are opening a candy stand. They need to buy 10 Snickers, two cupcakes, and four cans of soda. Snickers cost 50 cents. Cupcakes cost a dollar. Soda cost 75 cents. How much is the total? So we have 10 Snickers. So that goes here. Two cupcakes here, and four cans of soda here. Snickers cost 50 cents. Cupcakes cost one dollar, and soda costs 75 cents. So let's see, that gives us two, 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 two. So $3 here, $2 here, and $5 here, and the total is $10. So these, this is an annotation exercise because I never actually move anything. All I'm doing is writing on something that already exists. And this is a great lesson that can be used at the beginning of class to reinforce the concepts from the other one and also help students learn how to pull the most important information out of story problems. So in addition you can also annotate programs that are outside of the PowerPoints or out of the software. So for example we're going to look at a PowerPoint slide and we can annotate that. And to do that we click on this button here which is the desktop annotate button and it leaves up our tools here but it gives us the desktop so we can write on any program that's already running. And so pretty much what happens is it's like you're putting a piece of glass or a piece of plastic over the computer screen. So you can write on that screen. So for example, we are having a lesson on history. I could have the students label, or I could label in the process of teaching them, the 13 original colonies. I can never remember how to spell Pennsylvania, so I'm just going to write Penn. And that one's New York. I'm just going to write NY. You get the idea. Now this is a little strange because if we go to the next PowerPoint slide, it leaves up our annotations here. So we have to rem remember to go over here and clear annotations every time we move. So that was an easy labeling exercise. Probably one of the better ones is having students write up ideas or thoughts. So if we're talking about the Constitutional Congress, we can have the question, should the House of Representatives be directly elected by the people? We could then direct the students to readings online, which I won't go to, that show the actual debates that happened, a transcript of the debates, after which we could divide the students into a pro-group and a con-group, and the pro-group can write brief arguments on one side, and the con-group can write them on the other side. And so this is nice because it does two things. One, it gives the students a chance to interact with each other and to discuss the readings. Two, it gives them the opportunity to focus on one part specifically and write the answers up here so they get to get out of their seats, they get to move, and when you're finished, you have a document that has a summary of the most important parts of the argument. So the students have engaged the subject much more than if they were just sitting listening or if we were to ha just have them read the information. It's not anything complex. All they're doing is writing down information. You could have done it on a chalkboard, but this gives you some images and it helps you keep everything um, in one area. So this way you could also save or print it because it saves the, the information onto another blank slide. So that's all I have for annotation. Thanks.